<laughs> All right, hello everybody. Um, I'd like to call uh, this meeting to order. Um, first, I'd like to announce that um, we are being both audio and video recorded. Uh, my name is Jim Nash. I'm the Ward 3 City Councilor, and I am the Chair of the Transportation and Parking Commission. And next to me is seated. I'm Janelia Shara. I'm the Ward 4 City Councilor. I'm the Vice Chair. Uh, Jamie Albert Fisher, Citizen. Gary Hartwell, Citizen. Uh, Adam Novit, Citizen. Dave Pomerantz, Director of Central Services. Green Five and Planning Sustainability. Donald Scalia, DPW. Nancy Forrestal, Assistant City Collector. Maggie Chan, DPW. Jody Casper, Police Department. Beth Casper, DPW. Thank you, everybody. And um, I'd also like to note that I'd like to welcome Adam Novit to our, uh, our esteemed crew here. And uh, this is the first meeting uh, while I've been sharing where we've actually been, you know, all of our, our seats have been filled. This is really great. So, <laughs> it, um, so we don't have to worry about those quorum issues that we ran into a few times over the summer. <clears throat> so, um, so at this time, we accept public comment, and it seems to be we have some members of the public here who would like to speak to us. And um, if you'd like to step forward and uh, up to the podium and state your name and address, and we're here to listen to what you have to say. Thank you, Jim. <clears throat> My name is Peter McLean, uh, 298 Riverside Drive. Um, I'm also a member of the Bay State Village Association Board. I appreciate you all introducing yourselves and having nameplates. That's very helpful for the public coming in. Uh, I um, am also the author of the traffic calming uh, application that was put forward by the Bay State Village Association. Uh, and this uh, coming here today really got prompted by my recognizing that it hit its 10 year anniversary back in November uh, from it being accepted by primarily your predecessors uh, some 10 years ago. Um, <clears throat> following the application and acceptance to be looked at, there were public meetings, traffic studies, temporary speed humps, this more or less culminated in a public forum that was led by Laura Hansen, who was the uh, then traffic engineer with recommendations. Um, and things kind of stalled at that point. That was in 2011. Uh, a lot has happened in the past 10 years. Um, <clears throat> I remember when we were writing this, the, the features that are now at Smith College on Route 9 were just on the drawing board. Speed humps had not appeared yet at Jackson Street or Grove Street. Traffic circles like at Look Park uh, and at um, Con Street and Pleasant were years away at that point. We've become more sophisticated with our traffic calming measures and I feel that's because they work. Uh, which is something that we look forward to hopefully having happen on Riverside Drive. There's some local changes that have happened as well. When I was writing the application, I had a daughter in junior in high school, another one who was in middle school. They don't walk Riverside anymore. Uh, Hannah's now four years out of college, and Charlotte is going to graduate uh, in this, uh, this spring. So we look forward to that. But there are plenty of kids that have taken their place. And back when we wrote this, one of the things that my wife and I didn't have to talk to our kids about was be sure you're not looking at your phone when you're crossing the various dangerous intersections. Texting wasn't really a thing so much 10 years ago. I guess it was there, but it wasn't as big as it is now. Um, distracted drivers, distractive walkers. Uh, has the uh, traffic volume gone up? I would bet it has. Traffic speeds? I can't think of any reason why they've gone down. Uh, it, the 2009 study that was done uh, showed that there are regularly cars going over 50 miles an hour on Riverside Drive. It showed that the 85th percentile was 8 to 12 miles per hour over the speed limit. These are the <coughs> things that qualify Riverside for action. Um, I want to thank, oh sorry, there's also the study in 2011 where there were temporary speed humps and that showed that the traffic did slow down. Uh, but again, it's been a while and we haven't had anything happen. I do want to thank uh, Chairman Nash for walking Riverside with myself and Josh Bedell, who's currently the Bay State Village Association President, 
I heard somebody else come in, but I guess it wasn't him. There are several KC Village uh, folks that are here as well today. I want to thank Jim for walking with us um, down, base, down Riverside, looking at those intersections that are featured in our application. Uh, and I just mentioned that a colleague of mine at a recent Bay State Village meeting turned to me and said, we did everything they asked us to do. We're willing to do more. But at this point, what I really would like and hope that we can do is get us back on your agenda, uh, get consideration, and finish what we started in putting together the application. Um, it has been 10 years now. So we really look forward to something happening. Thank you for your consideration and your time. Thank you, Peter. Good afternoon, my name is James Lowenthal. My address is 181 Crescent Street. I can't believe it. We didn't plan this at all, but I come here, I just want to say ditto, but replace everything about Riverside with State Street. Uh, I submitted a petition to the city to introduce traffic calming on State Street before there was even a Transportation and Parking Commission. At that time, uh, DPW Director George Andrew, Andrew Keaty said, well, we're repaving State Street, but you can't just throw down a speed hump. It, you can't just throw these things down. You have to study them carefully. So State Street was paved with no traffic coming. Then there were a number of serious accidents, including a fatality on Elm Street that led to, uh, among other things, the founding of this Transportation Commission, which I sat on for many years, uh, as colleagues with some of you now, uh, and also to the significant changes on Elm Street that Peter McClain just referred to, which have had a huge and beneficial effect on the whole culture of traffic around the entrances to Smith College. It's completely different than it was before those went in, and absolutely for the better. It used to be uh, double jeopardy every day, double jeopardy being when one person stops in a drive, in a car stops for a pedestrian, the driver behind them doesn't see that there's a pedestrian, comes around and passes and maybe hits a pedestrian. Day, that was a, a daily near-miss situation and then of course, a tragic fatality that led to the changes that we see today. Now, when I am exiting the main uh, um, entrance and exit to Smith College, I have a stop sign. Traffic on Route 9 stops for me on my bicycle, regular. And I'm sure people like Gary Hartwell, who also bicycle in the area, uh, would say the same thing. The culture of it has completely changed because of the, the changes to the physical environment. That has not happened on State Street. Uh, as I said, I submitted a petition with dozens and dozens of signatures from uh, from residents, school children at campus school, uh, people at, at, uh, at Michael's house, the uh, retirement community, people at State Street Market, people at Hungry Ghost. Uh, there's, a, there's a huge demand there for uh, pedestrian and bicycle safety and use. It's a thoroughfare for pedestrians parallel to King Street, on the way to Stop and Shop and to the rail trail, and yet there was no traffic coming. I was dismayed to learn, and I have to say, I'm a member of the Bicycle and Pedestrian Committee, but I'm speaking as a private citizen here. I was dismayed to learn that the, the King Street traffic study, uh, uh, now uh, approaching, uh, we hope, actual uh, shuttle readiness, most of which I completely support, includes a, uh, a new traffic signal for the intersection of State Street and Finn Street. I think this is exactly the opposite of what we need. That is, a, I think, a disaster and totally inappropriate for the neighborhood. And if, if that is done, if that signal goes in with no traffic coming, traffic will increase, speeds will increase, the sense of it being car dominated will prevail. Instead, it should be a pedestrian bicycle friendly area. And as Peter McLean said about Riverside, the study showed again and again, numerous studies, 85th percentile significantly over the speed limit along State Street. Numerous crashes, enough that the, the, the Northampton Police Department at the time uh, found that it qualified as a crash cluster because of the number of crashes in a short period of time in a short geographical, a small geographical area. So it's been studied and every, there was a, a UMass uh, transportation, the engineers, the transportation engineers at UMass came and studied. Everybody concluded this uh, street, state street, generous traffic coming, but here we are again over 10 years later and nothing's been done. So I, I urge you similarly to put it back on the agenda. I know that you've been, you've been studying again the traffic coming program, which uh, I helped to developed with, uh, with Wayne Feidman and then Councilor David Narkowitz. Uh, we put a lot of work into it. And I know that there is a long, long list of qualified projects. State Street has been at the top of that list, <coughs> top three, for all the years that I was tracking. 
and yet still, it, for some reason, it has failed to reach uh, the level of being implemented. Uh, so I, I uh, urge you to, to uh, put it on the agenda so that it actually happens. I'm happy to work with you to help uh, 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 gather more input from the neighborhood and from the um, from the, the schools and other institutions in the area that are directly affected. And I uh, thank you for your time and attention. Hello, Sarah Northrop, 147 Hinkley Street. A uh, couple things on my mind. I'm glad to see that the uh, treatment access parking is on your agenda. Um, uh, specifically, um, Hinkley Street was just rebuilt. Um, there are no new speed limit signs, even though the design speed of the road is vastly increased. Um, having being an engineer and doing some traffic studies myself, uh, you can you can see how easy it is for people to go faster. I live at the Nonatuck end of Hakeley, where there's a slight rise, so people tend to hit the gas to accelerate, and maybe they hit the gas a little more because they're going to go sweeping up Maplewood Terrace. Um, and uh, there's no reason not to have this thing on the side or two. Um, it's the kind of thing that is easier to do when a project is happening. So it's on I can make suggestions multiple times. I can call PPW, I can chat with engineers and say, you know, this would be the easy, cheapest time to do it. Um, but uh, in any case, these signs are not expensive. So that's a request that I'll put in writing, etc. cetera. Um, um, ooh, well, I'm nervous. I'm usually not in front. Of the, I'm usually sitting there. And I'm sitting there and I'm a little um, Let's see. Um, I hear that there is a proposal for um, uh, marijuana cultivation, I think, not retail, on the far end of Riverside Drive. Um, I'd, I'd like to uh, make sure there's some clarification of what they're allowed to do with that site because we have seen what's happened with traffic um, down here by the highway. Um, I'm not pleased with it. And uh, a, uh, anecdotally, my mother-in-law, who I've been trying to get to move here for three years, uh, comes into town through that traffic she sees all the cars parked on the street in the, you know, in the right of way. She sees all the people uh, in line, um, unmanaged crowds and police, and she proclaims she will never buy a house here. Okay, so there is, in fact, property value considerations here. Um, but dealing with the traffic, I hear they're going to do something a little different in East Hampton. I would like to see someone be able to have some enforcement teeth on this problem. Thank you. Thank you. Would anybody else like this? Sure, come forward. Okay. Great. Hi, I'm Sarah Partan, and I'm a, a resident of Summer Street, and I was uh, I'm here to. Uh, voice an interest in extending sidewalks on Prospect Street to protect the kids who walk home from the campus school. Um, there is a, a one block from the, the Smith College campus school on Prospect Street. The sidewalk runs out and it's a blind corner. And so children who try to walk home to the north of Prospect Street are faced with cars zooming around the corner to come pick up their kids and the sidewalk runs out and there's no crosswalk. So I, I wanted to talk to you guys about the uh, possibility of either extending sidewalks or putting in a crosswalk and I understand it's on the agenda for later. And I. I brought some um, uh, uh, handouts that I had emailed to, to Jim, but I can uh, give you hard copies if that would be useful. Uh, uh, the, 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 these show the, 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 this is a diagram that shows uh, Prospect Street from the Smith Campus School up to that line corner and a couple of proposals for possible, possible solutions. One could be an extended sidewalk on the west side of Prospect Street, one could be an extended sidewalk on the east side of Prospect Street, or uh, uh, crosswalks. Um, so, uh, if that's the kind of thing you do that 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 I could give these to you, I, I would give them. Yeah, to you. It, uh, you you could you could give them to me, okay. and um, that uh, we it is on the agenda to be discussed Great. a little later. Great. And um, that I I see that it's where 
is it we, we could move it up in the agenda uh, based the, I'll move I tend to move things up in the agenda based on who's in Thank attendance. You. so Thank you. And there are other families who would have been here but can't because it turns out that there's a course concert today for the school. So uh, other families told me they wanted to be here and voice support, but they couldn't come. So, thank you. Well, I did, yeah, p please hit, uh, share them here and that um, I, I have some ideas to address that and I'll talk Great. about that when we're discussing it on the agenda. Great. <clears throat> thank you, Sarah. Yes, in the back. Alex, I'm saving the best for last. Oh. Hi, good afternoon. Um, I'm a parent and resident of um, Federal Street, and I just wanted to add my voice to the traffic calming uh, comments that's from before. And your name is? Alice Rich Lewis. Thank you. Thank you. You want to wrap it up, Alex? <laughs> well, I, don't, I wouldn't want to preclude anybody else from always an opportunity to address such an august group. <laughs> uh, Peter did an excellent job. I don't have anything to add to that. Uh, I'll be brief. Uh, but it's your name and Alex. Alex Gieslin, Riverside 164 Riverside Drive. Uh, that an organized effort on Riverside Drive has been going on for at least 20 years. Uh, Ken Nichols, who was then the um, traffic specialist for the police department working with a uh, governor's council safety grant, whatever, uh, organized uh, a, a, a really a, a neighborhood-wide effort that resulted in probably, I don't know, 30 or more hand-painted signs that were kept up for maybe two or three years. Uh, Ken uh, enforced additional speed enforcement. Uh, the, and I think that it made a difference. Uh, but it's hard to keep that on. It needs, it needs as, uh, as Mr. Longfall has said, it needs really uh, physical changes. It needs somehow, uh, it's a straight uh, stretch of road mile, a little over a mile connecting one of the very few bridges over the Mill River with a hospital and a high school and Florence. So I would appreciate your uh, putting this on your agenda and talking about it. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, please. Name yeah. and address. Hi, I'm Jim Clayton. I live on Prospect Street, and uh, I heard about this today. <laughs> Left my office at four to get here. Um, my kids went to campus school. Um, they got back and forth, and they're very safe, and they're fine. However, there's always traffic issues right in front of my house, and when parking is a problem, <coughs> people park in the wrong place it gets worse the only solution that I see to this for children's safety would be a crosswalk from into the triangle park on Trumbull and prospect and prospect prospect forks and there's Trumbull that comes up there's a an area there a large green area if a sidewalk was laid on the top of Prospect Street, because Prospect Street is also top and bottom. There's two Prospect Streets right there. Mm -hmm. uh, if the sidewalk is laid there, you could have a crosswalk from the campus school area to that triangle area. You'd have to cut a sidewalk there. And then from the far end of that triangle, basically to my driveway, would be another crosswalk or two. Um, 57 Prospect Street would be another crosswalk there. Both of those areas are at the top of a hill and those are also dangerous areas just for automobiles. Now, I've lived there 37 years and haven't seen but one accident, but car accident <laughs> in front of my house. But there are screeching brakes and there are kids walking there all the time. But it's a major thoroughfare for people going to the bus stop at Smith College from that entire development area there, um, you know, up Crescent Street and you know, past Finn all the way around to the synagogue in Prospect. I mean, I've got people walking by constantly. So it would be safe to have a nice crosswalk from between 57 and 63 Prospect across to the green area, which I don't know what to call it. I'll call it the Trumbull Triangle, because it's a triangle between Trumbull and Prospect. The sidewalk along the, tr the triangle on Prospect, 
and then a crosswalk at the top of Trumbull where Trumbull meets um, Prospect Street. <coughs> and if there was a crosswalk there, almost never does a car stop there. There actually isn't even a stop sign. So you're coming up that hill to a T dead end and people just go right through there without stopping routinely. And I walk my dog twice a day every day to Smith College from there and I've witnessed it all. I just know where to be careful. But if I was seven years old, I may not. So that seems to be the only reasonable solution. The west side of Prospect Street, you would cut down um, a large number of trees. You would cut into people's front yards, which are on a hill. You'd have to build retaining walls. The cost would be great. You'd be cutting into two driveways. Um, it just, that doesn't make sense. But everybody walks to my property, crosses the street carefully, to the sidewalk on the other street in front of what we call the manse. I don't know the address of that. It might be like 50 Prospect Street or something like that, and continue walking. So there's a like 80 foot area there that's unguarded, uncrosswalked, and lots and lots of foot traffic. I mean, probably 300, 400 people a day from six in the morning until, you know, eight at night, 10 at night. So enough said. That was my suggestion. Oh, I have a question. Are you in contact with Sarah? I just talked to her for the first time now. Okay, all right. So anyway, I didn't even see what she recommended, but my neighbor who was at 57 Prospect Street asked me to come to see what was going on because it affects our property. So. And I'd be happy to have a crosswalk between 57 and 63 Prospect going to the Trumbull Triangle, a sidewalk along the Trumbull Triangle, and then a crosswalk to the campus school side of Prospect Street, which, yeah, used to be the little Coco's house on the corner there. I don't know what the address is. It might be like 47 Prospect Street or something like that. So, that's all. Thank you. Okay. Is there anybody else who'd like to comment? Okay. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming today and commenting and Believe me, we're all listening, and um, and that uh, we can't speak to things that aren't on the agenda. But we we hear what you're talking about, and um, so so thank you. And you're welcome to stay for the entire meeting, and um, hear what we're up to. So um, so the next thing on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from October 16th. Would somebody like to make a motion? Okay. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Okay, that moves forward. Um, at this point, we have a reports from department heads and subcommittees. Um, who'd like to go first? I'll go first. Thank you, Wayne. Um, so just a few quick updates. We just released an RFP this week for um, fixing $100,000 of the worst route damage from the bike path through downtown. Um, $100,000 doesn't fix everything, but it's sure the, the worst sections. Um, we just signed a contract with uh, Berkshire Design to do a three quarters of a mile path from Birdscott Road to Woods Road to Sandy Hill Road. They would both be part of an eventual bike path to downtown, but also get the neighborhoods together. Um, we just got a contract signed for $225,000 of housing choice money, which would go to DPW for part of the repaving pro program. We're waiting to approve the contract. We expect that to come through. Um, we're working with the school department to apply for a safe routes to school project for either Bridge Street or Jackson Street, and we're waiting for the school department to figure out whether we're doing both or one, and it's competitive, so not a chance of getting it. But you're allowed to apply for up to a million dollars, so we're trying to do that. It'll be sidewalks to you know, put that right there. Um, the Edwards Square off-ramp from the bike path down to Edwards Square is finally moving forward, and we expect to come before the, we get to the city council for a ticket. We've been waiting for a long time to do an agreement with National Grid, and we're sort of the point where we're probably going to ask you guys to, to vote. Um, but we have money for that. We just closed out the City Hall Sidewalks project yesterday. They approved our work, so that, that's done. Um, the North King Street Roundabout, we just submitted 75% plans. At this point, we think we're on target to be advertised in September for 
2020 construction, um, there are a couple things that are in the way. Is that there's a chance we're able to see here, but we're, we're hopefully moving towards that. Um, the Rocky, the bike path for Route 10 to Route 66, we just submitted revised 25% plans. We're hoping to get a public hearing late this winter, early spring. Um, we don't yet have a program for when it moves forward to construction. But getting the public hearing or something makes it a real project, so we're likely to move forward. Um, working with DPW, we, we agreed on tool design to redesign Main Street. So this is a huge, you know, six-year design process. We're getting you guys all involved with it, sort of rethinking Main Street. Um, and there'll be lots of public process going forward. Um, and we just completed our first year of Valley Bike Share, about 88,000 miles were ridden. Um, we're planning at uh, East Hampton got a, a grant, so they're joining the system next year. They'll be involved, and we'll begin to think about our next grant to expand the system. So that's it. Thank you, Wayne. Dave, any concern? Director? Uh, paving. So 2018 paving, we completed portions of Pleasant Street, Hampton Ave, Fulton Ave, Wright Avenue, Cook Avenue, and a uh, section of Chesterfield Road has all been repaved. Uh, work has stopped for the winter. Uh, we had kind of an early winter, and there are remaining punch list items, including line striping, that we'll have to wait until the spring. Uh, crack ceiling is also complete for the season, as is line striping on various city streets. Jackson Street signal upgrades. Uh, we are upgrading the traffic signal at the intersection of Jackson Street, Bridge Road, and Cook Avenue. Contract value is roughly $140,000, and as part of this contract, we will be installing school zone flashing beacons on Bridge Street by the elementary school. Um, and this work will actually go through the winter as the weather allows. Um, upcoming, upcoming pavement projects of Mayor went to City Council at the last meeting and announced paving initiatives for the coming year. Burt's Pit Road has been advertised as 1.7 miles will be reconstructed in its entirety, including significant drainage improvements. We expect to open bids in early January, and we anticipate that this will be a roughly $2 million project. And on tap for next year is um, Glendale Road between West Hampton Road and the East Hampton Town Line, Bridge Road between Juniper Street and Hatfield Street, and Spring Street from Florence Road to Meadow Street and Colonel Valley Lane to Dimmick Street. And this, uh, all of this, including Burt's Pit Road, is more than five miles of roadway that's going to be completely reconstructed. Um, so the DPW is currently working on plans and specs um, for Glendale Road, Spring Street, um, and Bridge Road that we're in the spring. Thank you. I, the the flashing lights for Bridge Street School. You said when when were those? Might those go in? Uh, it's part of the contract for the Bridge Road traffic signal. So the contract will be working through the winter as the weather allows. Oh, so maybe by next few months. They know the it's a priority for us. Okay. Thank you. Um, anybody else? Nancy, okay. All right. Um, so as I said, that um, I'd like to move things up when people are here. Um, we have uh, Sarah who is here to speak about the, uh, the discussion of the the crosswalk proposal for State and Trumbull, which is has to do with your idea for let's see, Prospect and Trumbull. And um, so, um, what I this is so I, I had a discussion with the with the DPW director before the meeting, and what I'm going to recommend is that um, you and, and Donna have 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 a phone call and discuss ideas, and um, and that um, and that you you mentioned how this month a, a number of people couldn't make it so the idea is that you and the director have a discussion around ideas and that um, the hope is that some sort of idea can come forward and um, and then we can if it if it needs to be discussed for further we can have it on the agenda for next month <laughs> what do you think of that is that okay <laughs> um. Yeah, so, uh, and, and so you can uh, reach the director by just 
calling DPW and um, and letting her know that you're, you're calling about this particular issue and um, and we'll I look forward to hearing what you know uh, what comes out of the discussion can I just say one more thing sure go right ahead uh, uh, so this has been an issue not just right now like with our family but this has been an issue for years at the campus school so I've talked to previous parents not not the gentleman who spoke but other previous parents who have said they've been trying to make it a safe school a safe walking environment for their children um, and as well as previous parents so it's really it's 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 an issue that's of concern to many families um, and and I've been myself pursuing this for almost two years now so I contacted almost two years ago the DPW um, about this and uh, was bounced from one person to the next to the next and uh, ended up talking with with Ryan O'Donnell the previous um, chair of this group and I also talked with Maggie Chan who's here I see and um, I also talked with uh, um, uh, uh, sorry I'm blanking on his name um, Valletta um, sorry David David Valletta thank you <laughs> talked with David Valletta um, and uh, it's 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 been as so I'm eager to make progress so if, if there's if there's nothing that can be done today then I'll wait and speak with Donna later but if there's anything that can be done today to move this forward that would be great so I, I think so you, you prevented you presented a number of proposals yeah, to us yeah. and that um, and that for us to discuss those proposals without um, you having the discussion with the DPW director around ways to solve the problem that you're yeah. that you've come to mm -hmm. uh, to us with the hope is that you know my hope is that some sort of resolution come come out of that mm -hmm. and if not we we can take it up again okay. but um but I, I think that's the place to start is okay. to start you know come up with you know some allow DPW to come up with some sort of proposal okay. and um, and I understand you've been a little frustrated about that before, but it's going to happen now. Okay, and good. and we'll we'll keep talking about this. Okay, good. And at, at your at your next meeting, I'll be in in, in Chile, but my husband Don, um, I'll convince him to be here, and um, uh, other parents from the campus school and in, in my stead. So, thank you. Yes, go ahead. Um, I know that you're talking more about um, prospect and tremble, but maybe this also speaks to what James was talking about. And based on what was on the agenda, I thought we were going to be talking about where Trumbull meets state, which also is an issue. Actually, I've had multiple people talk to me about that in that crosswalk because so I just if, if there's going to be a discussion, maybe we could just sort of look at that area a little bit holistically. Mm -hmm. um, that's a tough crosswalk when they get down to state because the little there's a little bend in the road. And so it's hard to see if cars are coming so our, our school gonna, nurse got hit by a car on that very corner it's definitely a tough spot so um, if we're going to talk about it let's broaden it just a little bit and talk about that just mm -hmm. safety in, in general in that in that area in terms of crossing with pedestrians okay you mean for the proposal for next month or whatever comes out of this Yes, I mean, so based on what, you know, this says state and trouble, so that's what I want to talk about, but I agree this is also, you know, an important issue. So um, these, I think that, that, and if you have people, if, if we can get them safely crossed to that triangle, but then they're trying to get down to State Street, they're going to hit another dangerous spot. Well, the people who, that I've spoken with will all come from the north, walking along Prospect Street, so they're not interested in, in going on State Street. and. Frankly, State Street's far too dangerous for us to let our daughter walk there. Um, uh, but but people I talk to walk along Prospect um, uh, from the north to the school and back again. Well, that's my ward, and I have lots of people who do walk on State Street. And actually, I live on State Street, mm -hmm. and my children have to walk on it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think we should discuss it. Oh, definitely. So, uh, yes, absolutely. But for this particular problem, um, uh, making a solution at State Street isn't going to solve the solution on Prospect Street. No, but I think if we should discuss maybe yes. both of Great. those issues. Great. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks. Okay. Um, and you want to hear about Netta, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, please. It's up next. All right. Um, so. Um, would uh, so I think it would be good just to have a. Uh, a report from uh, the chief on how things are going and from um, the uh, director
director of parking. And um, so, Chief, would you like to go first? So I asked this for this item to be put onto the agenda because uh, we're currently, so it opened November 20th, everyone's aware of that. It's very busy in the area, lots of vehicle traffic and a giant increase in pedestrian traffic. That's not an area in the city where peak drivers are used to seeing a lot of pedestrians. So the crosswalks on Con Street, particularly the one that goes from the, the end of Con's closest to the roundabout uh, over to Pleasant Street used cars there, that crosswalk has been identified by one of the, one of the officers down there, actually Officer Allen, who uh, is our traffic officer, uh, as one that's that's more dangerous right now. Um, there's a lot of people crossing on it, parking in that the bowling alley. Most likely, it's a big, attractive lot. Uh, whether they should be parking there or not is not my point of discussion here. It's just a matter of people are parking there and people are crossing there. It's dark early. It's dark now. Drivers are going down Con Street, and they're just not expecting to see uh, anyone on that walk. Um, so I, I did reach out to DPW a little bit. Uh, flashing lights don't work there because we already have other uh, things going on on the street that would just frankly make it, I think, too busy for, uh, and they agree as well, they, they told me it would make it too busy, so I believe them. Um, so I, I'm not sure the best solution there. It is a little dark over the crosswalk, so perhaps it's a matter of a street light over it. Uh, we can put an, an in-roadway paddle, but that doesn't work in the winter when it snows and plows, and almost really, we, we can't be responsible to pull it out and off the street, just being you know, busy with other matters. Um, so. That is my area of concern, and that is that particular crosswalk. Uh, that being said, of course, there's a lot of parking issues going on around this uh, facility. Um, Pleasant Street, if any of you have been down around the facility and walked down there a couple times a week just to see how things are going, uh, certainly Wright Avenue as a residential street is probably the one that's being most impacted directly, just there right behind the facility. Uh, and driveways are blocked, and people are parking close to the ends of the road, a lot of out-of-state plates. Uh, and then on Pleasant Street, you know, northbound on that right-hand side of Pleasant Street, there's just a lot of, there's people are parking along that. Um, and it, it, it's okay where it's wider, but they try to add on to the end and it kind of tapers off. So we have cars really close to the roadway there. Um, so it's uh, been a challenge and something that's different. Uh, it's hard to predict how things are going to change down there as more facilities open across the Obviously, this is a novelty now and something new in our community, but more and more are going to open, so we're not sure what's going to happen with um, the number of customers that they have. Um, they currently have three traffic officers that are working down there every hour that they're open, so they're open from 8 to 10, and they have three officers that are helping to keep traffic flowing pretty smoothly, and that's been consistent since the day they opened. So I know that has a lot to do with keeping traffic moving but there's only so much they can do about some of the other parking and pedestrian issues are more challenging. Thank you. Wright Avenue in particular um, has been the um, focal point um, from November 18th to December 18th. Um, 89 tickets have been issued just on right um, for parking too close to driveways, uh, parking in prohibited parking. There, there is one section that uh, is a no parking zone already, and then the police department put out uh, another section on a temporary basis as a no parking zone. Um, Parking too close to the intersection, you know, it's 20 feet to the intersection, three feet to a driveway, those are constantly being um, ticketed. Uh, it's, you know, complaints have been received um, from the residents um, about this and also about the number of people. Uh, it, it's been a huge increase in the number of people on the street and the amount of traffic going up and down the street. Um, the other street that's been impacted slightly is Holyoke, but not as much, um, and it doesn't have as much you know, residential parking in the area where folks are turning off of Pleasant Street um, and parking on the right-hand side. Um, so that's that hasn't been as as much of a complaint receiver, um, but it's Wright Avenue. 
as it stands now, um, we may want to look at no parking along one side. Um, that's just a, a suggestion of where to start. Um, but I can see, you know, the, the impact of the huge amount of vehicles through that area has caused <coughs> like this, almost like a shell shock kind of thing <coughs> to that area. Um, so parking enforcement has been down there regularly, um, watching it, um, park, you know, ticketing as much as possible um, within what the ordinances say at this point. And um, a question, so have you had complaints from people on Holyoke Street or? I'm just watching any of the Are you mean Hockenham? Or is it Hockenham you're thinking of? Hockenham also, Holyoke Street further down, Hockenham, it depends, right. Friday, Saturday, you have a lot right. of traffic. Um, Hockenham has not been um, as many tickets also, you know, because it's further down, people don't necessarily, you know, people want to park as close as possible, mm -hmm. and that's right at, <coughs> and along the end of Pleasant Street there, just past the roundabout. Go ahead. Um, is it worth having someone from NETA come and talk to us in January and just hear what we, I don't know, I'm sure they're hearing about parking, but is it worth saying this is what we're seeing, these are the issues that we're having and what issues the PD's having, and do you have a long-term plan or what's, you know, do we have any solutions, to, if they have any solutions to offer? So I met with Leslie Lori yeah. of NETA and uh, that, um, so I, I can report that they're actually, they're doing quite a bit, you know, that they are, they're renting, they're leasing spaces from uh, abutting or nearby property owners. Yeah. And they're directing many of their customers to to park there over at the Gazette, um, up the street by, um, uh, what's it, uh, where um, Smith Glass is, um, uh, with the, the car wash place. And, you know, and that the, um, what is it? The, Jiffy Loop, it's not a uh, Pro, Pro Loop. They've offered people free two hour parking if they get an oil change. That there's been all of this kind of innovation going on. <laughs> um, the um, Northampton Liquors there, I spoke to the, um, the owner there, and his only complaint was when people would just take the spaces right in front of the store. He found that, you know, like if they parked off to the side, he was okay with that. Now, also, if they came in and bought something, which a lot of people were doing, so they would park and go stand in line and then come back and buy something. Is that his private parking? or is this That's his private parking park? right on his, uh, uh, I, he's probably or is got- that street parking? The, he's got 10 spots okay. on, on his property. Um, that, um, uh, that Netta uh, has also, I, I heard they bought pies for people on Wright Avenue around Thanksgiving. Um, and I've been in contact with a number of them. Netta is, has offered to um, uh, allow for some overnight, that they would lease some overnight parking on some of the private space for people on Wright, Wright Avenue if they can't find a place to park. So there's been a lot of, uh, there, Net is really, it has done a lot in that there's, um, that all of the businesses and property owners, are, there's like this thing going on where people are finding out a way to, you know, have some business and also try to accommodate what's going on there. Um, uh, by the way, it's in Ward 3, that's why I know all this. But, um, so I got all the calls from Wright Avenue. And, um, and I want to thank Nancy for getting, you know, for enforcement to be down there. And that's a lot of tickets. That's, <laughs> and you know, that, it, that describes what the people on Wright Avenue have been, have been dealing with. While um, the, the parking on the streets is for uh, everybody. But what's been happening on Wright Avenue is every minute from six in the morning till 10 o'clock at night, there's a car hunting for a space. There's no way they're ever gonna, and that um, many of those uh, units are rental units. There's, 
There's not a lot of off-street parking there. They've depended on those spaces. So um, having enforcement down there to kind of push people out of the elsewhere, it, it, that's been great. And um, and also um, that uh, you know that um, I want to thank the NPD NPD um, for the working with Netta. I mean, it's the amount of people that we've had in this location. I mean, we've had, what, what was the other city, uh, Leicester? Leicester? Yeah, they had to have a special town meeting. It completely tied up the city. Um, yes, there, there has been some traffic tie-ups um, uh, during uh, uh, rush hour, but by and large, traffic keeps moving. And, um, and I've seen those lines go all the way around the block. I mean, what would we say, 400 people in line? Maybe, I don't know. A Any lot. guesses? A lot. A lot. <laughs> that has been great. They've, they've been a good community partner. It's no issue with that. They've been baking pies and, and making signs and everything else. It's just too much traffic for, for that area to handle. So it, right. it's no, that is not doing anything you know, wrong and that they're doing what they can, but there's just only so much parking in that area. Um, and there's nothing they can do about the number of pedestrians walking around. That's the safety issue that I, you know, have the concern about is, <laughs> with 81 Con Street there and, and the dialysis building and now right. this, it's just, it's a lot of pedestrian traffic on that street where there's not normally uh, that much foot traffic. Well, the, with Netta, there's an expectation that well, two things are going to happen. First of all, that there's some holiday shopping going on, that this is a nov novelty gift item right now. And that's, that's why there's a lot of people there. Then also that um, that they're the only, you know, that there's not enough other retailers right now. And as those start to open up <coughs> in Holyoke and Springfield and elsewhere, people are not going to be coming here. So, um, but it looks like there, Netta expects a drop after the holidays, but the real drop is going to come when more places start opening up. Yeah. So, and I would add to that probably once when winter really sets in, it gets really cold. People just not want to wait outside. That wasn't true today. <laughs> is, is there a sense? I guess, well, it's freezing out, and the line was very long today. Yeah. And I think when winter comes and we have all the snow banks, we're going to have additional challenges on Pleasant Street and on Right Avenue. Right. And once it, sorry, one, no, just one thinking out of the box. Um, is it possible to think about some sort of a shuttle parking system? Something nearby, where it's the ball now, where we can bring people feet. in and Netta can pay for a shuttle service, or even the fairgrounds, and we just don't allow parking in that neighborhood. If you want to come by, you got to park over here. Hmm. So, thinking of ways to reduce the the vehicle traffic doesn't address the pedestrian traffic because you're going to drop them off. Well, it would help a little bit because they wouldn't be crossing as much. I mean, if they weren't parked in the bowling alley or parking all these little residential right. streets, they wouldn't be walking around as much. So. Are there leased spots, you know, that they've got at the newspaper and over at Pro Lube? Like, are, are they full all the time? That's and a good question. It's mixed depending on the day of the week and the time of day. Busiest weekend, you know, off business hours and evenings. Do we have a do we have a sense of when other facilities will be opening? This weekend? According to the paper, yeah, East Hampton's supposed to open. So East Hampton, weekend. so we may we may see it. If East Hampton's going to open, we may see a significant change. Yeah, that's an interesting question. I think we're all going to have to kind of wait and see. I noticed that a lot of folks are from out of state, and the convenience of Netta's location right off right. the highway, For I sure. think, is definitely a draw. So I, I'd be curious to see if maybe more consistent customers, medical patients, end up going in to avoid the lines. I don't know. Or people that are local, local. that are familiar with the situation there will be drawn off to East Hampton, leaving Netta as more of an out-of-state um, thing. So East Hampton's opening next weekend, and I think that that is like at Mill 180. It's in one of those buildings over there. Mm -hmm. And is there any sense of other, um, like when Springfield or Holyoke or any of these other places going to open, or is that is that sort of down the line? The ones I've heard of, like Salem, are, are obvious. I haven't heard of okay. any local ones around so us other than East Hampton. Other than East Hampton. It'll be, in, it'll be interesting to see. It's 
because that's only a week away. But yeah, I was also thinking about the shuttle. Mm -hmm. um, it seems a way, because you have the people going back and forth to the cars, um, and especially if they're out of state, they don't really know where they're going. Um, so I would say that if, if this does wind up being a longer term, that that would seem to make sense. Um. I agree. I think that that's a really great idea. I mean, I, I definitely feel like the city has handled this beautifully and as well as we possibly could, but I feel like Netta has, their business has insufficient parking. I mean, it had barely sufficient parking when it was just medical. It now has wholly insufficient parking. And so even when it's not so crazy, I think it's always going to be a bit of a challenge. Yeah, I don't think that it would have been, if you were to, if you were to approve that site for that use, now, it would be difficult for me to imagine that location with that amount of parking being approved in the planning process. Mm -hmm. So I understand how it changed over time, but we really have a kind of a something that sort of doesn't fit on the other the moment. To Red Avenue, we received parking requests from Red Avenue residents. Um, they suggested resident only parking. I don't know of other places that we have resident only. We only have one, and that's Kensington Avenue. Option. Okay. Can we do that for to the last city council to test things out? So you could either do a permanent resident only parking or I've had the exact process, but council can approve something for 90 days, 60 days, something like that. So a short-term resident-only parking. Yeah, I think they'll have to test anything. I've had the exact language. It's not short -term. But won't that just push the cars up to the next residential street? It will. It's only to be nice to people on right Avenue. It's not a, it's not a comprehensive thing. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing that's, that's not about NETA per se, but it's just worth sort of thinking about, so, you know, we took over um, Pleasant Street from Holyoke to Hockman Road two years ago or three years ago, and then did the whole Pleasant Street project. We just took over Pleasant Street from the dike up to Holyoke Street. And so, it's, you know, it's still, the lines are painted, everything's set up as if it was a mass dot highway. And we should think about what do we want there? Do we, do we want to add parking lanes? Again, this is beyond just net of space, but it certainly highlights that. You know, we're trying to get on street parking, trying to get meter parking, trying to get bike lanes. So this at least starts making us think about it. Well, I, I appreciate that um, that we've been allowing people to park in those those zones there because otherwise they'd be elsewhere, and um, that um, there there clearly is ample parking there. So um, so I think that would be really that would be great to look into. So Jim, are you looking for a, uh, a motion of any sort? I've heard invite the netist director here for January. Uh, she's just saying, let's monitor it as we go and, and see where we are, especially with new facilities opening. Is it something you're looking for TPC to do today? Um, what I was hoping is we, we could just have a, a public discussion and really acknowledge what's been going on and that, um, and that you know, getting all of the, the the work that parking and the police department have been doing and also I, I think what we're seeing is that we have this this surge of business going on that is going to go down at some point but as Adam pointed out when it goes down what is that actually going to look like and does NETA actually fit you know right now it looks like they, they need probably another 30 parking spaces even to, to accommodate even you know, uh, a lesser level of parking or of customers. So, um, but I, I'd be happy, I, I can invite um, Netta for next month to speak to all of this. And, um, but to your point, Dave, you know, um, are, are there things we could be exploring between now and next month? So Wayne, you mentioned the parking idea, parking on Pleasant, how would we look at that? I mean, to some extent, the police are testing us because they're allowing people to park there. But mm -hmm. it's, you know, do you narrow the lanes? Because you, you know, right now, the shoulder isn't a full parking lane width. 
Right. Um, so we just need to measure how much. But how there is room for parking and then travel lanes for vehicles, right? Absolutely. And what I don't know is that there's room for parking lanes and bike paths if there wasn't both, which would be wrong. But oh, so we so might be giving up some of those things. Yeah, I, we haven't looked at it. I don't know if DBW has, but you know, we, just, we haven't done that since. So how would we how would we go about looking at that? That's my question. I can talk would to Maggie and Maggie and I can talk. <laughs> okay. Sure. All right. And I guess we don't need a motion for that, right? Um, is there anything else? Uh, I think that inviting Netta next month might make sense. I mean, they can probably provide some projections on, uh, you know, how many customers they're going to be having and when that might ramp down. It might be useful for us to have that information. They need to know when the next shop is open. Yeah, the exactly. Next city over probably the probably next right. or whatever. They may have a, uh, an idea of how many more shops there might be over time. I've got to say, I am concerned about the snowbank issue, though. It is serious. Also, um, there are temporary no parking areas that have been created and then signs have been put out. Um, but unfortunately, you know, these are temporary signs and they've gone off with people or been thrown into the shrubs or moved around or whatever. So, um, I think we need to relook at that, and if we're going to keep it as a temporary no parking zone, it needs to be signed better um, because it's it's hard to try and track down all the signs and then bring them all back and stick them into the cones again, and they get blown over by the wind. And it's it's a great idea, I think, but if we're going to keep it, then we need to trying to make it a more permanent solution so that it doesn't blow off down the street. So when you're saying temporary parking zone, where where are you talking? On right. On right. So yeah. like on the south side of right right now is the temporary park, right. no parking zone. And I believe that there were some signs that were also on Pleasant Street, um, heading out towards the roundabout. Um, so. Well, I guess that's the other thing we have we have these like this emergency temporary plan in place and how much of that do we actually want to keep in place as we move forward in into the future so and, so, and with the snow coming and the snow banks and such those signs are just going to get <coughs> destroyed and blown away and all that sort of stuff with the snow so we really need to come up with something you know, I, I think as soon as possible. So, do you, does parking have the authority to just come up with new signs? It's the police department that would, they've already established it, that it's right. there. It's just, um, I think that we need to come up with something that's going to keep the signs there better. We need okay. to help them out with, you know, that. So that's something you guys could talk about. Yeah. We don't need a motion if, for that. If we need posts, we can, we can get posts. Post, yeah, yeah. That's what we would need. But it would. Chief okay. Goodman, did your um, officer notice any sort of difference once we dropped that pedestrian paddle into the middle of Con Street? Yeah, that was our initial solution to the crosswalk. Uh, the crosswalk issue was with that paddle. And I, you know, I didn't follow up with him afterwards, and I don't know if he worked it again, because we have rotating officers through it, so I couldn't speak to that. Um, I'm just wondering, it was kind of like a stop gap you know, there's been a few close calls. Can you get this like physical barrier into the middle of the crosswalk that will just potentially slow people down because it's in the way? And I always wonder how much physical barriers in the middle of the road help or don't. But it seems to have worked here. We haven't had the accidents yet, but okay. yeah. So I guess it's working. But I, I mean, I haven't heard that it's been hit or right, right. destroyed. We've not had any accidents around there yet, so we're getting them. So, um, so the three of you will talk about putting in some some posts to make these um, no parking signs a little, or where no parking signs where we haven't placed a little more permanent, and so they can stand up to the snow. Is that right? 
So we don't need a motion for that. All right, thank you for talking. <laughs> okay, uh, Sarah, you had a question? Um, thank you. I'll sure there's another opportunity in the hearing. Um, uh, one of the places that is opening or about to open has uh, set up an appointment schedule for their sales. People sign up to be within a 15-minute window. They sign up online when they go to get their, you know, driving directions to get there, and so they've only got on hand as many people as they can take care of in 15 minutes. Um, so that's. There's, there's other ways to skin the cat that have to do with uh, maybe maybe it's compelling them to take more action. And you know, I speak from a zoning perspective. When I saw the um, the application that only came to the zoning board because they were putting in a, a second egress, um, I was startled by 17 cashiers because I, I hadn't quite gotten it through my head that they were moving from medical to to uh, recreational, um, but the whole point of zoning is to try to keep these problems from happening. So having uh, having this surprise, um, it kind of reminds me of the Warp Tour some years ago when everybody was shocked with the number of cars, um, and the initial reaction was to never allow anything like that again. Um, but the real solution is has to do with okay, now we have some information, we can plan better. Um, worst case might be, they gotta be somewhere else, but maybe there's an easier way for them with their cash stream income to take care of this problem that is affecting our entire population. In addition to traffic on the highway and, and other issues of uh, impaired driving. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any more discussion on this topic? Just to go back to the shuttle parking for a second, if anybody has any ideas of potential sites uh, to get them to you by next month meeting. So if we can present that as a possibility for yet to pursue, not necessarily that these sites will work, but to show them that there are a handful of locations shuttle parking could be an option that you might want to pursue, mm -hmm. as opposed to just saying we should, you should think about it. So I, I, I'll have, I have a list of things that I'm going to have them speak to when they show up. Uh, appointment, the appointment schedule idea, um, do they actually have parking on the, adequate parking on the facility, uh, the shuttle parking idea. And along with the general, you know, how do they see this thing changing? Are we, you know, what, where is, where is the actual customer level they expect to be at in three months? So, yeah, Sally, in terms of the appointments, they offer that as an option. They I'm offer sure. pickup. Right. They, you can order ahead, and you don't have to stand it. There's a much shorter line. Um, but I think people are liking the idea of being able to go in and see the display case and, you know, so. Oh, yes. So anything else? Okay. On to the next thing. Um, taxi language. All right. So GL's going to pull this up here. You want me to describe what, how we got here? Okay. All right, so you're going to correct me when I screw up, though. All right, so um, we um, last year we approved some new taxi language with the idea of better um, regulating the, the vehicles that taxi services are using on the streets in Northampton. Um, that so, and part of uh, that process, what we came to, what we came up with was that the taxi company needed to be based in Northampton. And what we realized was that there's actually other taxi companies who are trying to operate, who are operating in Northampton, and that, um, and that we 
at council um, were asked to consider an idea of like, is there a way that we can allow those out uh, un, uh, those taxi companies from outside of Northampton to operate here? And um, so what we we put together is this the, this newer language that allows, in particular, there's one cab company right over in East Hampton, right across the the line. Um, and that they have a fleet that half the fleet is livery, the other half of the fleet is, is taxis. And the idea is that the, um, the, as long as their fleet is up to snuff in terms of uh, meeting our regulations for, for vehicles for hire here in Northampton, that um, the new language allows them to do that. They don't have to have their actual business based here in Northampton. Um, part of the thing we ran into is that the, the Northampton taxi company actually wasn't based at where it was saying it was based and the vehicles were being kept somewhere else and um, so that kind of opened the door for us to also look at all of this. So we're basically, we're asking anyone who's gonna be operating to just come get a permit here. So, and we're sort of opening that permit up to businesses that are not based in Northampton. And so as long as they're permitted, they may operate. Um, so I think that's the section that's up on the screen right there is about the business owner permits, hard to say. That's 316-17. Uh, and then the other change is uh, I don't what B1. Which one. B1, yes. Page five. So this is under vehicle registration requirements. And which is this one? This was. Should we read these? What? Um, so previously, this section said livery vehicles shall be hired on a pre arranged basis only with a minimum. Um, 12 hour notice that's remaining uh, and adding provided that fares picked up pursuant to a pre-existing contract shall not be deemed to comply with the 12 hour requirement unless the specific fare was arranged at least 12 hours in advance. So this is speak so this goes to this one company that was saying that they were operating um, they're not based in Northampton, but they have sort of a long-standing relationship um, with the hospital where they where they pick people up and help people out. And and so we're just sort of clarifying that if they want to still be a livery vehicle, they, it needs to be arranged um, twelve hours ago. So I spoke with this company on the phone over the weekend, and they are completely fine with this new language. That um, that when it comes to any, they say that um, should um, the the hospital call them with, you know, somebody who needs a ride and it's under 12 hours, they're more than fine sending one of their taxis. If it's more than 12 hours, they can use their um, their. Um, livery vehicles so they were actually fine with this and um, appreciated um, what we've been up to in the fine fact with permitting here that they would um, yeah fine with permitting their vehicles here and adhering to this new language around um, and, and that their fleet could work around uh, operate as taxis and livery vehicles based on our language here the fact that they're not here after the phone call kind of indicates how much they're okay with <laughs> the new language. Chief, do you have anything to add? <laughs> this is everyone's favorite ordinance. Uh, no, I think this cl clears up the gray area that was in there. It was really a matter of whether or not a pre-existing contract with an organization counted as 12 hours or not. I mean, that was kind of the issue. And so that needed to be clarified. If you have a pre-existing contract, can you count it as a taxi instead of livery? Because um, it's less expensive to have a livery plate on a vehicle. So there are transportation companies 
that want to put livery plates on some of their fleet in order to save money, which we get, but that plate cannot be used as a taxi. So that's what we, this whole thing from the beginning, that's kind of what we're trying to help everyone figure out is we had a lot of taxis operating in our community with livery plates, which cannot happen. So the original changes addressed that issue and then this contract short term 12 hour issue came up. So I think this clarifies that until it doesn't. <laughs> so like, we'll just update it. We'll update it yeah. weekly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know enough about this, so I'm going to show my ignorance. But you know, as someone who frankly does use Uber and Lyft a lot, I worry this makes perfect sense in a world full of livery and taxis, but doesn't put deliveries at a disadvantage in a world where Uber and Lyft are taking a bigger and bigger market share. I'm not sure what the solution is, but it's, I hate leaving out that part of the equation because frankly, I'd much rather have investments in a local company than in Uber or Lyft. But I never know 12 hours ahead of time, so. Yeah, but that did come up as a point of discussion at various times throughout looking at this ordinance, and we just can't write regulations about it. And that's ultimately what we talked about is we know this is going on in our community, but it's kind of outside of the ordinance. Um, so, And we've been working on this for so long that it's going on <laughs> so much more now than it right. was when we first <laughs> Right, you should just be over now. Let's just come in as well. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will say that the taxi service that I was talking to that they wish we could look into it but I, I don't there's really no way we can regulate it because it's, it's so off the radar yeah. I mean we we could say we could just recommend that people use registered cabs that we think that would be a way to go because they're complying with our laws um, well, and, and the benefit is there's increased insurance. I mean, that's what right. you're paying for is you're paying for a driver that's been checked through the police department, licensed by the city, and you're getting increased insurance if there's an accident. So. Okay, so um, I would somebody we like... a positive recommendation. I'll make a second. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, any di more discussion on this? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any uh, any nays? Any abstentions? Okay, it passes unanimously. Okay, um, we have two uh, appointments to the bicycle and pedestrian subcommittee. Uh, one is Nicholas Horton. The other is Brett Constantine. Um, is this how we usually do this, Wayne? Um, do you want to tell us anything about these two individuals? Sure. And Nick was the founding president of Friends of Tra of Northampton Trails and Greenways, so we partnered with him for at least a time, 15 years or something. Um, they've been a partner both in fundraising for bike path extensions and maintenance. Uh, he stepped down as president a couple of years ago. If he wants to get back involved, um, Brett actually I don't know his background, but maybe six months ago he started coming to bike and ped meetings and has been at 90% of them in the last six months and contributes to this conversation. I actually don't know what he does for a living in the side of that, but he's been great in the conversations and we'd love to have them both. We've tried to get, there's no set membership for the committee, there's no ordinance that says the members, but we've always tried to make sure we have an odd number of members um, and we've lost two members and so we've put us back to what's been a workable number and keep us an odd. So and the committee as a whole, the subcommittee as a whole, like, ignores it. Excellent. So, uh, would somebody like to make a motion, and I suggest we can vote on both of them at the same time? I move that we vote in favor of uh, appointing Nick Horton and Brett Constantine to the Bike and Ped Subcommittee. I'll second it. Excellent. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any abstentions? Any no's? It's unanimous. <clears throat> okay. Um, I think we can move a little faster here. Okay. <laughs> so uh, next on the agenda is a request for a 15-minute parking zone at Cooper's Corners. I'm going to table this. Um, I'm going to speak with Councillor Murphy, and um, we're we're going to have. This request go through the normal parking request process uh, where it gets sent over to DPW. DPW evaluates whether or not the request meets 
it is valid or it, it makes a recommendation and then it may come back to us so um, so I am going to table that topic um, report on the con street crosswalk flashing signal uh, reinstallation and Jody were you was this the crosswalk you were worried about you were about the other one okay but I, I received some emails about this is the one further up near uh, Salvo near house center. near the south yeah. right all right so um, it has been reinstalled <laughs> so it's been fixed thank you director good okay. can, can I ask one question so that one had a lot of sort of false positives it was flashing when a truck came by has that been addressed as part of this previously you mean previously yeah so, I don't know anything about it. Okay. This was wiped out by a drunk driver, like a hit and run driver, quite some time ago. Okay. And there was a insurance delay. Okay. Okay. So it's back in functioning. Let me know if it's not working. I have not received. It always worked when people hit it. It just would sometimes magically start flashing, and I'm not sure. I noticed that too. Yeah. I, mean, I, I have not received a off. single complaint about it, but we'll we'll check it since you're okay. mentioning it. Thanks. Was it the one that was missing, or the one that was the one right at the there? senior center? Right. On which side of the road? I'm not sure the answer because I see the lights flashing. I'm not sure which one set it off. Yeah. Right. Well, there was only one unit there for quite some time. Was it flashing erroneously? <laughs> I don't know how recently. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I sort of walk by there at random times, would often see it, but I can't okay. tell you which side it was on. Or you know, sorry. Okay. Um, I think that item's done. Because um, it's been reinstalled and it's, it's all finished. All right, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, discussion of crosswalk. Hold it. Oh, yeah. By Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School. That item, I'm going to table that as well. Um, I have asked, I'm asking the. Um, the uh, superintendent of Smith Vogue to speak with the director of DPW about this and again <clears throat> hoping that some sort of recommendation comes forward um, that maybe at some other point we'll, we'll have something more of more substance to speak about um, discussion of proposed ordinance to modify the first space on Pleasant Street southeast of Kingsley Avenue to uh, to change it to a handicapped space. Um, let's see. Donna, Maggie wants to. So this first came from the building department because of Roberto's restaurant. They reconfigured their parking area and eliminated handicapped parking spot. The building commissioner asked if we could designate a space on the street near the, res near the restaurant for handicapped parking. So when you're looking at the street, there's more than 60 parking spaces and there's one designated handicap spot, uh, which is sort of in the vicinity of Pearl Street. Um, so DPW looked at this and the recommendation that we have, which you're seeing up on the screen there, um, is to modify the space south of Kingsley. And the reason that we have made this recommendation is because of the raised crosswalk where if you designate the parking space to the, to the left of Kingsley as handicapped, there could be difficulty traversing that raised crosswalk and we want to avoid having folks who may have a, a disability, you know, sort of very close to a, a physical alteration of the roadway. So that is our recommendation. Okay. Any discussion on this? Oh, well, I'm going to recognize, recognize myself and wait. I, so, uh, this is in my ward. This is on Pleasant Street. And um, this space is directly in front of what's uh, Millennium Liquor Store. And uh, that in front of the store thanks to a fire hydrant and the way a, um, a curb cut further up the street is placed there's only two parking spaces in front of this you know what's a high turnover type of business um, 
Uh, nobody's going in to spend a few hours in there. Uh, they're there to, you know, buy some some liquor of some sort, or maybe some milk and eggs, and then they're on their way. Um, so this is only so this would um, uh, would eliminate. Well, I don't want to say eliminate because I'm sure that there's customers who might use the handicap spot as well. But for that entire, for much of that, it it really means that there's only one regular parking space for this large stretch of street. And I really wish there was another way we could solve this. Um, and um, but I I'm hearing from DPW that this is. The, the only solution to based on the um, uh, the regulations around having handicapped parking. Well, this is our this is our recommendation. It's it's certainly not the only one. And as far as regulations go, I think maybe Nancy can speak to that okay. a little bit better than DPW can. Um, I did want to put in that we are seeing um, a really significant increase in the number of HP placards in use. Um, we have an aging population. Um, baby boomers are moving into um, an age group that may necessitate the use of the HP placard. Um, so my personal input is that if someone who is um, able to walk a little further, um, you know, we need to make uh, our city accessible to people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. So there, there had been a space that was removed when Rivera's reorganized something. Is that what I heard? Yes, they yeah. they renovated their parking lot. I okay. guess. But we were c counting uh, designated handicap parking on private space, correct? That would it? It yeah, was on their there, property. There is no um, enforceable regulation that says you know you must have X number of spaces for a handicap spaces for every space. There is there is no regulation. I mean, there's certainly like you know recommendations or like oh, how does how does the city you know want to take care of its disabled population? You know the city can certainly have an internal policy, but there is no federal mandate that you must meet. As, as far as this matter goes. Also, as part of Pleasant Street repaving, there's going to be additional parking spaces on the opposite side of the street, where there's only one right now, but there'll be a few more because the lumber yard will be closing there. Well, they've already closed their curb cut. So once all these projects are finished, there'll be additional parking spaces that are metered. People can park across the street and walk over. Right. And is there any way to know if, if one side is more advantageous for a handicapped spot? The, the existing one is on the is on that side. That side. So is there a way we could like take the existing one and move it across the street and then move this one across the street here? What is this one? So there's the existing one. It's up by basically by the DA's office that um, and it's on the easterly side of the street and so it kind of fit, fulfills the guidelines for up there and we're lo looking to meet the guidelines down at this southern end of Pleasant Street and if there was you know on the other as Maggie was pointing out on the other side of the street there's going to be I don't know, maybe 10 parking spaces in a row, something like that, as it goes past the lumber yard. Maybe not that many. All right, eight or nine, right? Or something like that, a number. And then across the street, you know, where the liquor store is, there'll be, you know, one space. So there's gonna be retail in the lumber yard, but there seems to be more retail on the, on the, this side, where it's, where the recommendation is for now. Mm -hmm. Right. We hear you, Councilor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I'm just. Uh, I, I, 
So as somebody who works with people with disabilities and sat on the disability commission for, you know, 10 years, I'm like, oh gosh, you know, maybe we have to bite the bullet here. I, you know, I'm, I'm willing to do that. But I, I think the bullet is providing the No, it's just, it's really, the no, we, we're, we're doing this trade off, you know, for, you know, our parking as we develop this corridor is becoming tighter and tighter. And that, you know, I, I five years ago, you could find spaces all up and down Pleasant Street, you know, before Yes moved down the corridor there and before Northampton Coffee opened up. So, um, can you anyway. Put, can you put the, the spot on Kingsley? Like, I guess those aren't even striped, are they? The spots in front of Roberto's that are on Kingsley? The curb isn't really defined there's going to be another painting spaces on a residential street yeah, yeah. Okay. situation. So could the, looking at that picture there, there's the spot that's designated as the, um, it looks to me like it's on the southbound lane of Pleasant Street, and it's beyond, it's beyond Kingsley, right? So it, there's the, appears to be a blue car parked there on the north side of that intersection. Right, and there's a raised crosswalk there. And there's a raised crosswalk there. Okay. So That's so if the, the disabled driver exited the blue car, they would be in the road and have to access okay. something by traversing the raised crosswalk. I got it. Right. 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 Are you ready for a motion? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> we have a positive recommendation on the recommendation from the DPW. I'll second that. Okay. Um, Is that Jamie or Gary? I second it. Okay, any more discussion? Okay. All in favor say aye. Hi. Hi. Okay. All right. So um, that's the last thing on our agenda. Um, uh, next month, uh, I I'm going to want to talk about uh, pace car, and um, and feel free to send me um, anything you you want to talk about for our next meeting. And um, thank everybody for coming today. And. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.